everyone, welcome to another stitch with me. It's the, where are we now? I think it's the 8th of September. I've just finished work and I'm just very conscious of the fact that I've not sort of checked in with you, giving you a little bit of an update <laughs> in terms of how things are progressing and you probably know what that's all to do with. Um, so there's quite a lot that I've got to share with you whilst I do um, this stitch with me but I am going to be working on today um, the Mirabilia Royal Games 1 and I'm going to be doing a little, little bit of beading on the Queen of Spades down here today just for a bit of a change and I'm very conscious of the fact that I've been asked a number of times in the comments to do a stitch with me on my Chatelaine and I was really wanting to do that for this particular video but the Chatelaine, I know you know this if you've done what if you're doing one or you've done one you, you just need to get your eye in it on it a little bit and it's been so long since I've picked it up that I just need to sort of get my eye back in on it and and pick it up again because obviously there's lots of speciality stitches and things and stuff within it um so what I'm going to do if it's all right with you is work on this today and then for my next stitching with me which I will do to share with you everything that's gone on with the charity bike ride that I've been doing. Um, I will do the Chatelaine then and sort of make it, you know, a really nice um, upload where you, 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 you're seeing that piece again because I know a lot of you frequently comment and you've missed it a lot. So I hope you don't mind me doing this today, but it's a bit of beading, it's a bit different and um, it's just very easy for me to just pick up at the minute because I know you know, but at the moment everything is just that little bit crazy. So I'm just going to be, um, I'll initially start with this little section here. It's like a necklace and I've got these gorgeous Mill Hill beads here. So this is 02026 and they're like, um, like an opalescent blue and sparkly. So I've got my little tacky bob here. So I'm going to empty some of the beads out onto that. And then I've got my, um, just a beadsmith beading needle here. It's just a size 10. It depends whatever I've got. Um, I use these quite often for jewelry making as well, but um, I'll go ahead and get set up and then zoom in and then I'll pick up back with you in just a moment. There we go, we are ready to go. So all I've done is just fastened onto the back of the work, just some floss and I'm just working with a single strand here. What colour DMC have I just pulled? Oh my goodness, what have I just done with the packet? Um, three, three, four, one. And, and what I do, is just choose um, a strand of floss that's a very similar colour to the bead um, that I'm going to be placing and, that, and that's basically it. You can get um, all sorts of particular beading sort of filament or floss. You can get sort of invisible floss um, which I'm sure works an absolute treat. I've never ever used it. So if you have and you, you really recommend it, let me know. Because obviously I've, I've done these for a number of years and I always just go with one strand of DMC in a matching colour to the bead and just work that way really. But you know, I am always open to suggestion and change. These are actually quite nice beads actually. Um, so I've just picked one up now. I am using my own uh, needle minder as you can see here. <laughs> So yeah, I thought it would. Uh, it's about time I started uh, to use some of my own stuff. So when when I put these and place these, I always go on the diagonal. Now there's no rhyme nor reason to this. Let me just zoom it in a little bit for you, so you can see how it's sitting um, there. Um, there's no rhyme nor reason. It's just the person, like the friend who I had at the time, who was really into cross stitch and taught me. Um, this is the way she always plays to bead. So obviously you can lay them flat and and go in with a sort of cross to make them sit nice and flat if you wanted to. I just literally catch them once with one single pass of the needle and floss and it's the way I've done it. I've never had anything fall off touch wood yet. So, you know, after, after a number of years, it seems to work for me. So I'm, I'm happy with that and it's quick. Um, you know, I don't, you know, these, these pa pa uh, pieces, you know, take long enough as it is and I really don't want to be labouring <laughs> anything I don't need to. So I'm, I'm just going to continue placing these. I really do need a new tacky bob. Um, I've moved it out of the camera because it's just full of dust and 
nastiness really it's um i've had it for quite a long time so I, I really do need to invest in a new one and they're not expensive either they're just such good things for stopping your beads from rolling all over i used to lose most of them as i was i was stitching in the past so yes i have promised you a chatelaine um for next time and, and i really will do that once i get my eye back in but as you know um and you may not know if you're new to the channel, I, um, I'm in the process of just wrapping up my training for a charity bike ride that I'm doing for a cancer charity called Maggie's. It's a UK based charity and in essence they provide care and support post diagnosis so that they'll look after um, people's mental well-being. Um, and that of the families as well because obviously it's uh, not just an individual event it's a family event isn't it uh, when somebody's diagnosed with something as catastrophic um, and they deal with um, a sort of pain relief they'll deal with uh, things like um, finances will write in oh, all, all of the stuff like we, we don't really want to even think about but obviously it's in the forefront of people's minds and then also the concerns people have you know if they do go into remission around cancer returning as well and, and the psychology of all of that we know this it's not just the physical the physicality of of having cancer it's it's everything else that goes with it so I'm, I'm doing that and as most of you know and if you don't know what I would suggest doing is, is going back a couple of videos and I'll, and I'll put them all in the links below so you can just sort of follow the journey because I have been on a bit of a journey with you over the last few weeks and shared a lot of my experiences when it comes to the training and the ride and I've got I've got some more training escapades to, to put in for you whilst you're stitching you can have a bit of a laugh at me because it was a funny occurrence when I was out on the bike, um, not last weekend, but the weekend before that I'll put in for you. Um, but that's essentially what I've done. And in order to support my part of the fundraising, because obviously this is why I'm doing it, I'm doing it to raise funds, I sort of changed the setup of my Etsy store. I traditionally make cards and jewellery, but I've really focused on cross-stitch and stitching related things um, because this is really what I do and what you guys do so I've been selling a, a digital pattern that my dad's designed um, which is on the store needle minders which match the image um, that you could stitch and also scissor fobs as well so I'll just put in a little insert of what's left there are a few pieces left that are still on the site I just thought I'd share with you the little bits and pieces that I've got left so obviously they're the needle minders um, they're 38 millimeters and that's the same design that you can see on the cross stitch pattern so obviously if it is a very pretty design and if you didn't want to stitch the pattern you could always just you know take a needle minder and have the benefit of the the artwork on it and then I've got this type of scissor fob and they're just essentially hook around your scissors there with the the lobster clasp and they are made out of preciosa seed beads so they're um yeah that they're, they're really nice and they've got they've got quite a bit of weight behind them as well and obviously then you've got these charms and and hearts on as well um yeah they're lovely <laughs> and then this is my array of other types of scissor fobs and these are made out of all sorts of mixtures of glass beads so we've obviously got the silver uh, we've got gold ones of various colours and then I've got some bronze ones. I can make more if, if I need to and if there's a particular colour that you would like that isn't shown here then just please let me know and I'll pull something together for you. So yeah, I mean, if there's any of those things that you would like, um, just, just go ahead and, and put them in your basket. I can see um, that there's a number of you who have got needle minders and patterns sitting in your basket so my, my last push and um, I guess last request is please check them out if you were thinking of buying it obviously you know right now I'm offering free delivery on everything um, so I'm, I'm covering the cost of that just to remove any barriers I know um, you know things are, are not always ideal charity often being in at home right now I, I appreciate there's difficult circumstances for very many of us with with Covid and the impact it's had on us 
Um, so I'm trying to just remove as many barriers as I can for you. So as I say, up until the point where I do the ride and maybe just a little bit after, I'll, um, I'll leave the free delivery on and let's see if we can just get rid of all of the rest of the stock um, that's sitting in my shop right now. Otherwise I'm going to be left with a, a load of scissor fobs. Um, well, I won't because obviously I keep selling them, but yeah, it would be good for the money to go to a good cause. Um, and I, I'm sure you'll agree on that one. But um, yeah, I uh, the last time I posted one of these, we were I was going off to Chester to do a safety clinic with one of the instructors that had flown in, and I briefly mentioned it on my previous um, sort of monthly update. That day was amazing. Unfortunately, I, I wasn't feeling particularly well on the day. I don't know what had happened. I went out for something to eat with one of the one of the women who is actually in my team. Stayed at her house the night before, and I, something just didn't agree with me. So I woke up with a bit of a, a dodgy tummy, to be honest. So that took a little bit of the shine off the day, but still um, managed to enjoy myself massively. Picked up loads of tips and tricks uh, in terms of gear changing, climbing hills more efficiently. And we have a lot of hills on the on the ride we're doing. Honestly, I cannot believe it. Um, the sheer volume of climbing, and I'll tell you that in a minute. Um, so we, we did a lot of that. The etiquette of riding in groups. They had us doing um, safety manoeuvres. So they had us riding around cones on the floor um, with one at each of our hands behind our backs just for bike handling skills. Uh, it was great. Really enjoyed it. And then we did, I think we just rode about 25 miles so it wasn't a particularly long ride um, had a nice coffee together and um, and just chatted and got to know each other a little bit and uh, that one was in Chester then there was another one the following day in London for the for the guys who are more southern based which again was apparently their experience was was fantastic so this time round we are starting off in Chester and then working our way sort of through North Wales, through the Snowdonia National Park is essentially where we're riding. So we're, we're riding from Chester to Conway, then on to Carnarvon, and then the ride finishes around the Bala Lake area. So it's a three-day event, as you know, it's kicking off. Oh my God, it's next Saturday. I, I thought it was the Friday. Everybody thought it was a Friday, but we're actually riding the Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So it's the 18th, 19th and 20th. We travel on the, on the, the Friday. So it's a three day event. Um, in terms of climbing, we have an absolute monster of a, of a climb to do, particularly on the last day. So we've got, on the first day we're riding, I think it's about 115 miles, and we've got 1400 feet, uh, meters, sorry, not feet, I wish it was feet, 1400 meters of climbing. We've got on the second day, about 108 miles with 1600 meters of climbing and then on the last day it's just under the 100 I think it's about 92 miles and that's the day where we do the most climbing so we've got 1800 meters of climbing which is 6,000 feet and um, I'm going to put in the the training clips for you now and um, Obviously, I've had, I've tried my best to have a massive push on climbing as best I can and, and trying to get more of it in <laughs> to, to kind of help me out on the days because I can tell you now the distance, absolutely no problem. I've been doing more than that on some of the training rides. I know I can, I can sit in the saddle for that long and I can do the distance. Um, the challenge for me and for, well, it's going to be a challenge for us all, is the sheer amount of climbing. And I'm not a natural climber, let's just say. If you put me on a flat surface, I'll go for miles, like literally. I'll go fast for miles. The climbing, it's, it's not my strong point, I have to say. So um, let me put this clip in for you now. Enjoy. Um, don't laugh at me too much when you see what happened to me on um, the second stage of this training bit I've got to show you um it's one of those things uh, there's there's always something there's always some form of drama hello lovely people I hope you're all doing well so it's Thursday and I have a hill repeat session to do 
Now, I was going to go out on the bike and do it, but it's probably going to get dark pretty soon because I've got finished wor uh, work. I've got my tongue tied. I've got finished work later than I was intending to, which is always the case. And rather than end up cycling home in the dark, I thought I would do it on Zwift, which is kind of an indoor platform, which I will show you in a moment. So I'm going to climb up or part of the equivalent of Alpe d'Huez, which is obviously the big French ski resort. And it's what the pros go up as part of the Tour de France. But I'm just going to climb the first part of it because what I have to do is, is what we call hill repeat sessions. So I'm just going to go up and down the early part of it as many times as I can before my legs burn out and, and just sort of push it. Because I mentioned in my previous upload where I showed you my monthly whips that we'd had the route come down and there's a shocking amount of climbing every day. In fact, I would have to climb the equivalent of Alpe d'Huez twice in, in one go to get the amount of climbing that we have per day in because there's, it, there's that much of it. I mean, we knew it was going to be hilly with it being North Wales, but obviously it's very hilly. So I'm going to get myself changed. I'm going to show you my setup. And then, yeah, you can come and suffer a bit of the climbing with me and um, I'll show you how it all works. Um, over the weekend, I'll be out and about. I've got some really big hills to to climb over the weekend. Um, so obviously, hopefully the weather will be good and I'll be able to share that experience with you. But I'll, I'll show you the setup now um, that I, I ride on when I'm indoors. So this is my indoor setup. So this is the Ridley bike that the company sent me. So it it's too big. Um, it needs some significant adjustment. So it's, it's really a little bit uncomfortable to ride on. And I, I don't know how I managed outdoors, but I've got it on my Wahoo Kicker indoor trainer, which is which is brilliant. So obviously there's its little back wheel. Um, so you take the back wheel off and you connect it to this sort of mechanical um, sort of indoor trainer and what it does is it it speaks to the computer program that I'll show you and it puts the resistance on so it, it will sort of put resistance on so it feels like you're climbing then you have to change the gears it's really quite clever um, so this is obviously my setup I've got like a little platform here where I'm going to stand my iPad in a bit. I've got my fan ready to go. Here's my other fan. Daisy usually adopts a position in the massage chair while I do this and has a bit of a snooze, don't you, Daisy? Um, but yeah, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to go and get changed and then I'll come and show you how all of this works. So this is the Zwift interface. So I am finding a route. So the little, you've got different routes here, but I kind of go to this like artificial world. It's in the middle of nowhere. Now, the one I want is called Road to the Sky, which is essentially, as you can see here, like the Alpe d'Huez equivalent. And what you've got is a, a nice run in before you start to climb. Now, this is quite an aggressive climb. It's got like a, a 10, 11 percent gradient, which is massive. And and I, I would prefer probably a, a lesser gradient but I'm I'm just going to have to bite the bullet. So the plan is to, to go up and down the first phase of it as much as I can. So I'm probably going to climb maybe a couple of hundred feet or so, turn back round, come back down, pause, and then go back up it again. Because the plan is to sort of cycle up the hill for between four and seven minutes with a really decent effort and try and do that between four and seven times if possible. So we'll see how we get on. We're off. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun, um, but you know, the, it's not going to be the distance that gets me when I uh, do the ride, it's it's going to be the elevation that's going to be my bugbear. bear. Um, I'm, not, I'm not particularly good at climbing, I want to say. I can go for miles and miles, so I could do, I don't know, 100 miles, no bother now, on a not a flat route, but a relatively flat route. But when it comes to the climbing, oh my goodness. Um, I'm, I'm getting out of breath now even, and I'm only on like a 3% incline. Mind you, I should use my gears a bit more effectively. But um, yeah, it's, it really gets me. So I'm not a climber, but obviously on the day, well, the three days, 
that this is going to be my nemesis, to be honest. Right, help. Just over three miles in, and um, I've hit the start now. <laughs> By the look of it. So, I've climbed about 60 odd feet so far, so let's see. Um, let's see what I can do at this point, I think. And, uh, I'm warm already, I've got my fan on. Maybe the fan's sitting in the chair there. Yep, <laughs> it's starting to kick in. Right, wishing. All right, I don't know whether you can see me on that. I'm just gonna oh, turn myself around. Oh, try. Come on, little avatar. Oh, there we are. I've just done uh, my sixth climb. I don't know how much you can see. I'll just stop pedaling. Um, so I've climbed just over 2,000 feet so far. Um, 10.5 miles. So you can see where I've come. So I'm just literally turning round and then that'll be my seventh climb up here. You can see, it's bonkers isn't it? Um, and then I'm just going to continue on until like my legs are literally too tired. So one more effort and then I'll sort of see how I feel because that'll be my seventh which is like way more than I thought I was going to do to be honest. I'm still not down. <sighs> it is a long way. <laughs> anyway, I'll catch you at the end. There we go, I'm down. So I climbed 2736 feet um yeah it was it was steep so um yeah i'm just gonna go and do a bit of stretching now but that's my hill session and i'm feeling um yeah so much better about that morning <laughs> it's 5 a.m as you've just seen oh gosh i'm just trying to drag myself out but i didn't sleep very well last night because this one <laughs> was not very well in the night she was um she was sick so i spent not long but i was up with her um yeah so i was gonna pull myself together get sorted have some breakfast coffee get myself ready for the bike and today i've got a i think it's about a 65 miler to do with a fair bit of climbing because <laughs> i need to get some climbing in <laughs> I'll see you when I'm ready. All right, I'm just going to have my breakfast. You can see behind me through the doors, it's still pitch black here. So it's it's about 10 past five. So I'd got pretty much organised with all of my bike and I made my peanut butter sandwiches yesterday. So I'm all organised. I've just filled my water bottles and stuff. So, so yeah, I'm going to wait. Well, I'm going to have my breakfast, coffee, and then get changed and then sunrise here now is after six o'clock in the morning so i'm gonna head out just a little bit before like i'm not gonna wait for it to be totally light when i leave this morning i do have lights on my bike so i'm gonna get away a bit earlier because it's starting to because the mornings are getting darker and the nights are getting darker it's all pulling in and it's becoming autumnal um um you're just gonna try and get out a little bit earlier to try and beat some of the traffic so yeah, I'll um, I'll see you in a minute. Right, day is now starting to break. I'll just come and stand in front of the window and let you see. So it's starting to come up, so I'm going to get myself away in a few minutes, but I'm now ready. So just to give you a bit of an idea of the route I'm doing, so I'm going to head out to Scorton. Um, you've been there with me before, and I introduced you to my bench, and that's about 20 miles away. So when I get there, I'll pick up with you. And then I'm going to take kind of the back route. So I'm going to head back from Scorton and then um, sort of take the back routes sort of through the likes of, of little places called Great Smeaton and Hornby, Appleton Whisk. And then I'm going to sort of bear right and head up to it's East Harsley, um, or is it East Rampton and then East Harsley and then Ellerbeck and round to Osmotherley because there's a really good climb sort of up and through Osmotherley. If anybody you're from that kind of North Yorkshire area, you'll know this. So I'm going to definitely be doing that climb, go over the top to Codbeck and Dam's Sheep Wash and, and down the other side of the moors. I'm going to do that, 
But first, um, Tony gave me a bit of a pep talk. And, and when I did this route last week, I made a bit of a mistake and I started to head towards a different part of the moors and realised I'd gone wrong and turned around because I kept getting lost last week. It was a disaster and it was raining. Um, so I'm going to try and get up the early part of the climb to Snarlsworth. Um, so it, it is quite a significant climb. I don't know how far I'll get up it, but a climb's a climb, isn't it? So I'm going to just sort of relax and, and just go for it, see how I do there, head back down that path and then go up the rest of Oz Motherly Bank, Codbeck, down through the back, um, through the back of Swain being back to where I live. So if you're local, you'll understand what I've said. If you're not, you'll have no idea. Um, and according to Strava route planner that I've done, it's about 65 miles. It could be a little bit less. It could be a bit more. And obviously I'm going to do the um, Snarlsworth climb as well. So we'll just see. So I'm going to put this one in the bed. I'm not feeding a breakfast with her not being very well in the night. And then I'm going to jump on the bike and head off before it gets any later. So I'll see you at Scorton. Oh, I'm sitting at a different bench. Oh, welcome from a, a very sunny Scorton. But I tell you, it's freezing. Honestly, I think I've, I've come very underdressed, um, but the sun's coming out now and um, yeah, it's starting to warm up a little bit. I must my fingers, I've just tried to. Uh, Tony's just sent me a woo woo, come on, lass, you can do it message. <laughs> I'm just responding to him and I can hardly type, my fingers are numb. Um, so it's one of those like autumnal fresh mornings. So tomorrow I will wear leg warmers and a warm top. But anyway, um, we caught up with our coach yesterday, he took us through a few bits and bobs in relation to the route that we're going to be riding. and yeah it talked us through like the bigger climbs there's some horrible horrible climbs um but um yeah he was saying that what we have now in terms of fitness is probably as much as we're gonna have um he doesn't see us making massive improvements at this point now because we are so close to the ride and what they'll start to do is taper us down so i would imagine that probably next weekend will be the last weekend where I've got anything remotely big in terms of riding it and then um, I would imagine that the weekend before we ride which is the weekend after next there won't be anything and we'll be kind of recovering and maybe doing a couple of little drills or something through the week so I'm looking forward to that not having to get up at the crack of dawn but um, yeah I'm gonna have a quick bite to eat I'm feeling a bit sick, I made the big mistake. I decided last night to have a, a prawn and garlic pizza. <laughs> and, uh, there was quite a bit of chilli on it and I thought the chilli was uh, red pepper. Mm. And um, obviously ate a slice with it on and, and now my insides are burning. So I'm feeling a little bit, God, like I've got a, a lead ball in my belly. So I won't be making that mistake again. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and eat a bit of my peanut butter sandwich and um, yeah, I'll see you in Osmotherly. <laughs> see you in a bit. Hello, I've arrived at Osmotherly. Um, you can see how, what a nice morning it is, but I am heading <laughs> up there, <laughs> trying to point the right direction. So um, yeah, so this is the start of the climbing bit. So I'm going to see what I can do, but I'm 40 miles in, feeling really good just had a sorry malt loaf and um, a drink so I'm gonna get off I just had to come on and show you this oh my goodness it's just absolutely stunning you know what it's like days like this where you just feel so lucky to be out and about on the roads hello everyone <laughs> just uh, <coughs> got a bit of a funny story to tell you so after I'd done the climbs I came across um, the top of sheep wash, Codbeck sheep wash, and there was a massive puddle in the middle of the road and I'll put a picture in of how big it was. And I, I watched the cars come through it and it was really deep, honestly. I did wonder whether a couple of the cars would make it through and they did. Um, but I thought, yeah, there's no way I'm gonna... Hiya, you all right? Another cyclist. Uh, there's no way I'm gonna chance my arm and um, and walk through that so I decided to sort of cut around you know sort of through the vegetation on the side of the road oh my god I was up to my knees in water like 
waterlogged. I, I mean, I picked the bike up, <laughs> saved the bike. So my cycling shoes are just sloshing around with water. I'll, I'll show you how horrible they are. They smell, I'm gonna have to wash them and hope they dry out by the time I need them tomorrow. So suffice to say, I'll not be doing that route tomorrow. Um, yeah, but I've got another 10 miles to do, so I'm just stopping to have the other half of my sandwich and then I'm just gonna crack the rest of it and go home, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not without his challenges, but such good fun. I'll see you later. Oh, so I've made it home. What's on there? What is it? 61. <laughs> so not bad. Not bad at all. Um, with that climbing in, I am shattered. So I'm going to go and sort out my shoes and hopefully get them out in the sun to dry for tomorrow because they want a good wash because they stink. Look at this. I mean, uh, a utility wash. Now, now, this is the second bowl of water that I've used for these socks and the shoes so I'm gonna go again and, um, and then I'm gonna put a wash on and get these through because I just don't want them to get all stained up because they're my name's cycling socks so oh my god this is how bad it was um yeah I'm gonna keep rinsing until that water turns a lot cleaner um especially for those shoes yeah so I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Wear feet and shoes. Luckily, it was a nice day that day and I was able to get those shoes outside and dried. Um, the following day, I did another ride. Um, I'm trying to think where I went and what I did. I think it was about a 50 miler with about 1,000, no, sorry, two two and a half thousand feet of climbing. I think I might have a bit of footage of that I think my Strava let me put my Strava picture in for you I'm sure I took um I took a record of that ride because again there was a fair bit of climbing but but that Sunday I did hit a wall and I'm glad I didn't film on that day because I was really tired from the two days before with the climbing session on on the Zwift on the indoor trainer and then the climbing I did on the Saturday I was a little bit broken on a Sunday because I climbed the Osmotherly Bank twice and then the wind got up on the way back and I had a little bit of a pity party, I have to say. I'm not proud of it, but I did have a little bit of a pity party at one point where, you know, when you just, your legs won't go and it's not working very well for you and no matter what you're trying to do, you just feel like you're riding into a wall or you're hitting a wall. It was not a good training session, that one. And I, I was saying during the actual filming, we were hoping things would start to taper down. Well, they have a little bit, but not a lot. So I was still riding quite heavily last week and over the weekend. This week's a little bit better. I am going out when I film this. And then I am um, got a little ride to do tomorrow. Then I've got 100k to do either Saturday or Sunday he hasn't really been specific about when he wants that he just asked for 100k over the weekend so I'll pick the better day weather wise for that because it'll no doubt be a a, a, a wet fest again with the weather because it's we've had two days of, of really nice sunshine which is happening right now and then the bad weather's back again here in the UK so our wet summer is turning into a wet autumn so I've got that to do and then next week it really is a couple of recovery rides, a turbo session and then we're away to uh, we're away to Chester to start and I honestly can't believe how how quickly it's come around. It's really scary to be honest and oh my goodness, just just the thought of it. Uh, I know we're all starting to have a bit of a a moment. The ride started last Friday. So the German team kicked off first last Friday for their three days. The Nordics have ridden this week. There's a day's break for them to travel. And then I think they're in Switzerland, France, uh, Belgium. And then they come to us. So obviously we're the sixth segment to go. And, uh, and the last. So we, we, we're finishing it all up. So... Um, so yeah, so we're all we're all excited, um, but obviously a little bit nervous of, of the amount of climbing we've been doing. 
oh, oh we're able to do but I know the, the day the emotions of the day riding in the group and just the sheer determination that we're all going to have is is, is really going to drive us, drive us forward with this. So I think once we all get on the bike on that first day, um, it, it's going to make a real, a real big difference and we'll just settle into it and, and relax, I think. Um, so yeah, but what, but what I'm going to do is film little bits of that three days for you. And then when I do my next stitch with me, I will um, I'll be able to share that with you and um, you know let you see what we got up to to a certain extent because obviously I will be riding the bike and <laughs> it takes me a lot more time to stay on it never mind uh, trying to film but I'll, I'll be able to get like little vloggy type shots for you so we are really well supported on the event if I haven't mentioned obviously we've got a number of coaches riding with us the splitting us into three groups which is nice and um, we'll probably stick with the same group for the three days unless you know there's any reason why we need to change and um, they're, they're with us and and what's what's great obviously these guys are are ex-pro you know they've raced and competed at international olympic level so you know we're, we're in really safe hands and they'll make sure routes are clear they'll ride with us we'll probably have one in front and one behind and then as we approach junctions and roundabouts and such like, what happens is those guys, the one at the back sort of sprints forward and they cover us as we go around roundabouts and intersections and turnings and things like that. So we're well protected. Plus we have a follow vehicle behind us that sort of has our like little bags on. It's got the mechanics in it. <laughs> With, with spares, you know, if somebody gets a puncture, um, they literally sort of scoop you into the back of the van, um, change the puncture while the rest of the ride keeps moving and sort of pull over and throw you off the back and you join the group again. So everything's very slick. And then we have another van that is, is ahead of everybody. So it'll be ahead of the three groups and it sets up food stations for breaks. So we'll be having... I understand about three or four official breaks per day and um, you know a couple of loose stops or whatever anybody needs uh, water stops pit stops whatever it might be um, a rest after all of that climbing um, will be ideal but I think what the, what the best thing to do is as I'm vlogging this on the days is is share with you the routes on each day because obviously I can I can flash the like route schematics up for you now but it's probably not going to mean very much and it'll probably mean a lot more as I share my world of pain with you <laughs> um, and, and what it's doing to us physically and, and, and what's expected of each day so I'm going to break it down like that and um, I hope you'll enjoy it that way as well um, I think it'll be quite fun and interesting for you to share the entire experience with me um, but you know this has just really consumed my life for the last few weeks if it's not obviously the training it, I've been making stuff like a monster for, for my Etsy store I, and honestly I can only say I can't say thank you enough for the level of support and, it, and it's blowing my expectations in terms of of what I've raised and I'll share that with you um, when I've got the final number in um, on on my sort of next stitch with me you'll be able to hear how much as a as a community we've raised for Maggie's honestly it's it's amazing and I know I've said it on every video I've done of late you honestly we know what a wonderful community we're part of but when it comes to things like this you've just literally blown me away with with your level of support and kindness and lovely words whether or not that's on the the updates or the emails you've sent me or the comments you've put in the Etsy stuff as you've been as shop as you've been buying things just amazing you you really are the loveliest people in the world honestly um I, and I'm so I feel proud and privileged just to be to be part of of our uh, floss tube community I really do it does it really does make you think um about things doesn't it and you know where you know you feel most comfortable where your people are and yeah you you've just been such um 
an inspiration. Your stories have been inspirational to me. And you know, because I've messaged you, I'm riding for many of you and for your loved ones as well. And I'll have all of your kind words and the people you've messaged me about in my mind as I do this as well. Um, there's, there's just so many motivations for this for me on a, on a personal level as well and I've, I've shared that with you and you know I'll just I'll just carry all of those memories and, and yours with me as, as I do this and that that is what's going to get me through this that's what's going to get me through um, you know some, some of this torture <laughs> as we go through but yeah I'll tell you what's going to be nice though it's going to be nice to be able to just go out on the bike if I want to and I will want to I definitely will want to and just do what I want if I want to do 25 miles I can do 25 miles if I want to do 60 miles or you know 100k I can do it if I want to but I don't have to and I think that's going to be the nicest thing because whilst I've had the bike and been on my road cycling journey I've never not been involved in this process, you know, this training process, because I've never been a cyclist in my life. I've had a mountain bike with appalling degree of success. Um, so I'm not a natural cyclist, or I certainly wasn't a cyclist. I wouldn't say I'm a natural one, but I, I certainly wasn't a cyclist prior to this. and. Uh, Obviously, just being able to do it as and when I want is, is going to be brilliant. If I want to get up at daft o'clock, as I've been doing on a weekend, and go out and do a long ride, I can. If I want to sleep in, I can. If I want to do, as I said, 20 miles after work on an evening before it gets dark, I can do it. Uh, it, it that's going to be brilliant. And I will keep this up. I have every intention of keeping this up. And if I can't get out much over the winter on the roads, I, you've seen my indoor setup. I will be riding around the worlds of, of Zwift and com continuing my training in that fashion anyway. So this is a hobby for life. You know my story with this. Um, not only has it been sort of a, a brand new hobby and personally transformational for me and giving something amazing to a wonderful charity. I, I, met, I met my other half, Ira, as you know. And, you know, for me you know to it, it's been that life-changing where I've met you know somebody who is incredibly important to me through it so uh yeah there you go <laughs> but uh other elements of my life <laughs> it's other than what I've been doing is, is is really quiet I mean obviously work's still busy work's always busy um which is always a blessing and you know I, I I always feel privileged to be able to work from home and the fact I have a job as well in these uncertain times is always amazing to me and I'll never ever underestimate how lucky I am ever when it when it comes to how well we've been supported by the organization I work for I you know I can only applaud them they have been truly truly amazing to their employees during this time and I know that you know from speaking to people that is not the case across the board so I'll never underestimate how wonderful my company have been on on every level and and if things don't work out the way I would want them to in the future I, I, I'll, I'll leave with nothing but positivity if I have to I don't want to but if I have to um from from what they've done and and the experiences I've had here it's it's just been um, wonderful and, and then to be able to do the bike ride on top of that and you know that whatever I make and whatever we raise as a collective the company is doubling it for us um for Maggie's as well which again is a is another wonderful investment so the, the rest of the stuff I, many of you have written comments in about how much I get done in in so little time and you know <laughs> I can tell you there are many sacrifices made <laughs> in order to fit in the stuff that I'm prioritizing at the moment I can tell you now um, my biggest sacrifice is housework it's not a difficult sacrifice to work to make for me but I can tell you my house is not in great shape right now and once the ride's over 
I am going to to get my house in order like literally my house in order it's uh yeah it's not how I like it to be I'm quite house proud and you know I have a lovely home that I'm so grateful for and I just, I just feel so I need to give it a bit of TLC so if you're wondering how I fit everything in I don't I sacrifice stuff and I sacrifice my housework I did um, a massive massive pile of ironing on Saturday after I'd been on the bike um, did my training came home shattered and I thought right I'm gonna have to do some iron because I, I literally hadn't ironed I want to say for about a month and this sounds really bad luckily a lot of this stuff I could just hang you know I'm not a slave to ironing absolutely everything if I don't have to I could tell you that much um but there was I was starting to run out of clothes <laughs> so I figured I better make a bit of an effort and do it so I did and I was stood there for three hours and I still hadn't finished so there was a few I just thought I can't I can't do this I can't do any more of this I've had enough I've got the stuff to do so I packed the ironing board away and gave up at that point so I'm going to finish that off this weekend and um and just catch up and then that's a, a massive load off my mind and and just try and get a bit more housework done this weekend because obviously I go away for five days the following week because we travel on the Friday we ride Saturday Sunday Monday Monday is a a celebration night because I can tell you I'll not be having a drop of alcohol whilst I'm doing this bike ride um, there's no way I'm going to limit my limited abilities further by feeling rough and having a hangover not a chance and the Monday night obviously we will have a party to celebrate and, and, and I probably will partake of a, a little bit of wine or beer <laughs> uh, that, that, that night and um, yeah we get a bit of a sleep in and we travel home on the Tuesday and then back to work Wednesday so that's kind of how it's going to be and then from that point I'm going to spend some time getting my house in order so I've got when I come back, how many weeks will it be? It'll be just over two weeks before Tony's back. Because um, he's back on the 7th of October. So he's, he's nearly been gone a month. Um, it's dragged, but it's it's also gone by quite quickly as well because I've been so busy. So we're, we're, we're almost halfway through his tour right now. So he's home. So I'll be able to get some stitching done a little bit before the ride, I think. And then that couple of weeks or so before he comes back I'll, I'll get I'll get plenty done and then I'll do a update and then October's probably going to be very light because um, because naturally not that I'll be seeing him every day but I will be wanting to spend as much time or we will be wanting to spend as much time with each other as we can for the month before he goes back and repeats the cycle um, so I might not have that much to share with you in October um, because of that but then obviously I'll be back November December until he's back uh, the day before New Year's Eve he flies back in and then he's obviously around in, in January and then we repeat <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's it's interesting but you know that the power of technology and such like um, we, we've spoken to each other just about every night via whatsapp um, video calling which is an absolute godsend it's free because all you need is internet connection and we both have that so uh, we've been able to really keep well communicated so it's nice um, we both sort of need that um, connection really because otherwise you know how it used to be in the past for people whose partners worked away in whatever capacity it was it must have been horrific when there was really no means of, of contacting and we come back to the days of writing letters where you, you would be waiting for a letter to come through the post and you'd read and reread the letter and oh god I can't, I can't even imagine how tough that was so the fact we can actually physically see each other every day um, I mean virtually see each other not physically but virtually see each other every day is is a good thing um, so yeah, so that that's okay. It's it's been manageable. I'm I'm surviving and coping. So, um, 
but yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes after the ride's over we'll be fine but as I say I'm, I'm super busy at the minute but kind of that's really um my updates I don't really know if I have that much else to tell you Daisy's well uh, many of you ask about her and she's doing absolutely grand bless her um she uh it was quite funny I took her I took her for a walk well I've been obviously I take her for plenty of walks but every time I take her for a walk um because Tony doesn't live that far away from me um she knows by and large that the, the route and where it where he lives in, in relation to me so she gets Oh, she gets so excited when we approach the road he lives on um, and she starts to pull because she thinks he's going to be there because obviously Tony has a dog and I've got Daisy and what we would do on an evening sometimes is we'd meet on en route for our walk and take Daisy and, and, and Phoebe on, on a walk and uh, obviously she still hasn't got the fact that he's not going to be there as as we walk around to the point where we used to meet out of a hedge. It's, it's become a bit of a habit for us. So she starts to, you know, Daisy's very vocal anyway. She starts to have a bit of a scream fest and, and pull towards where she expects him to be and then he's not there. <laughs> so that's so cute. Um, yeah, and then when I'm talking to him on, um, you know, the, the uh, WhatsApp, video caller she's she's looking for him because she can hear his voice and he's obviously talking to her as well and she can she can hear him but she can't find him so she gets confused and she's running around the house trying to find him because she thinks he's here so she's up and down the stairs looking for him thinking he's hiding from her <laughs> he's on the phone so, so that's really sweet um my mum and dad are, are doing really well um they've i think they've missed me quite a lot because i've been so unavailable for the last few weeks with this training that I just haven't had an awful lot of time to see them so once it's over um, I'm gonna you know we'll go out and do something nice I think whether or not we go out for something to eat or we have a day out uh, on a weekend somewhere maybe a, a nice trip to York we love our trips to York maybe we'll do that and have a really nice day and get something to eat over there I think I'll treat them to that because I, I, I feel as though they have got really or had really the the short end of my attention for the for the last few weeks and family's so important so I, I do want to make that up to them I'm, I'm very aware of that um you know the the whole thing although as wonderful it is as it is it's it's been quite a selfish experience to a certain extent where i've i've had to put my time towards the training so much um, it's important I did it. I, I wouldn't want to be facing the event not doing what I've done training wise, but you know, um, it, it, I, I have felt selfish <laughs> through the process <laughs> and neglectful in many ways, like I've said, but you know, we, we, we can only do what we can do. And, and my big thing is you, you control what you can control and, and prioritize what you need to do at that given time. So, you know, I, I cut myself some slack on that and you know, I've learned to live in my messy house, <laughs> let's just say. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's all good. So I, I do hope you've enjoyed spending just a little bit of time with me today. I appreciate it. it's not loads and loads of time. And I've almost finished her necklace, which is great. So um, I will leave you. I hope you enjoyed the training updates. And, and once again, thank you so much for all of your ongoing support with the fundraiser. And I'll put... The links below so what I'll do is I'll link my Etsy store for you if you've not got stuff in your basket or if you have got stuff in your basket rather please check it out and I'll ship it to you uh, the last day I'll be able to get anything shipped next week will be Thursday morning then I'm not back until the Tuesday to post anything else so if you place any orders over next weekend um, it'll be potentially delayed by a day possibly so please bear with me um, so please check that out. If you've not looked at the Etsy store, have a look and see if there's anything you like. I'm also listing Hayley's um, Etsy store below as well. So Hayley has the stitching cabin and she also, you know, my dad designed a cross stitch pattern. Hayley's designed two as well, um, which I'll, I'll put the images in for you. They're lovely. 
Um, so if you didn't want to do a full coverage piece like the one my dad designed, you could maybe think of something like that. And all proceeds from the sales of that pattern, Haley is trans transferring across um, into my fundraiser, um, fundraising place of where the money's raised and, and put so she, she's doing that for me she's also added in a couple of new patterns recently herself she, she designed some gorgeous patterns so please just go and have a look she she, she designed sort of really the one she's put on is so cute um lovely little stitches will be for you know different occasions whether it's a get well or something like that it's just so beautiful um, they're just they're so joyous. So I, I am sti I'm going to stitch those two um, patterns that she's designed for my event, and then also return some love her way as well, and um, go on and and buy a couple of the other patterns and stitch them up because they're nice little um, you know relaxing stitches if you sort of don't want to do a, a, another big piece like I tend to do just to break things up a bit for you. Um, down there as well will be the direct link for the fundraiser site if you by any chance wanted to just put money in and, and sponsor me that way rather than buying anything on the Etsy store. A number of you have done that so thank you so much. Um, I've, I've responded to all, everybody who's put anything in for me down that route and I think that is about it. Uh, I link the other two videos also for you just in case you wanted to have a, a back check at some of my training shenanigans and stories so far as well and um, with that I am going to love you and leave you I'm going to go and get ready to go on the bike it's a beautiful evening I think it's the last day we're going to have a fine weather so I'm just going to go and do a short ride he doesn't want much from me tonight just an hour so I'm just going to go and do an hour's blast um, out on the roads and I will see you oh my goodness well I'll be filming on the ride but the next time I sort of sit down with you will be post-ride. I can't believe that. I cannot believe that that's going to be the case, that I won't film again till after and, and sort of sit down and do one of these videos. Oh my God, that's actually blown my mind and, and made me realise how close it is. Oh gosh. Um, but yeah, just once again, thank you so much for all of your support. You're lovely. You really are. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you too soon. Take care, guys. Lots of love. Bye.